Hi, and welcome to the Warhammies. Today we're going to just be covering an update to my Psyker builds, considering the new skill tree has just launched along with some new blessings for the weapons. If you've come to this from one of my old build videos, follow the link in the description below for a timestamp with the specific build you're looking for. If you want to catch more 40k content, subscribe to the channel. First, we'll cover my Soul Blaze build. So there's been a slight update to the weapons and the blessings of this build, along with some of the talents. First things first, we're going to switch out to use the Mark IV Blaze 4 Sword, just because I didn't have a good rolled one when I made that build video, but now I do have one which is really effective. For this weapon, we're going to be wanting superiority and precognition. That's because this thing is an absolute monster when it does headshot finesse damage, and this weapon is designed to be taking out those larger targets when Brain Burst doesn't work. If you enjoy the other Blaze 4 Swords, use them. But I'd roll this one with critical hit damage and melee weak spot damage, your perks. Then for the Inferno 4 staff, I haven't fully built this one up yet, but in terms of your blessings, I'd switch whatever we had previously for Penetrating Flame, which essentially means we apply Brittleness, so it means our team can deal with the enemies we've set on fire much more easily. Showstopper appears to be currently bugged on the staff, but I think it's a great perk to use on the Flamer, so as and when it eventually gets patched, use it. It's a great bit of fun, especially now with the talent for Brain Burst only targeting elite enemies rather than weaker ones. It means essentially that we're going to be clearing out those hordes, so when we kill the bigger ones, it might clear the horde as well. Going on to the curios, we've got the 21% max health, 21% max health, and a 1 wound. Notice each of these have combat ability regeneration on as well. This is beneficial for helping us recharge our shout when we need it. So going on to the talents, it's a very similar build to what we used last time, a few changes. So firstly head down and get Soul Stealer. We're going to be doing a bunch of warp damage. It's the only way we're going to regenerate in toughness. Then get Perilous Combustion. Essentially means it's going to apply some Stole Blaze to some nearby enemies. Which will be linking with the Brain Burst and kill things. It's really useful in crowds. Then get your Toughness Boost. Then pick up Brain Rupture. For Brain Rupture we're going to want Kinetic Resonance and Kinetic Flare. Get both of these. I enjoy them. You can play around with them. But because this build lacks a kind of dedicated range option. Your Brain Burst is going to be what you're using to snipe enemies. So if you need to deal with a lot of ranged enemies quickly, you're going to need to pop your ability and then pop their heads quickly. Moving on, get the minus power regeneration. Now I like to pick up Psychonetic Aura, just so if we're killing bigger enemies we can get our shout back quicker. And then Wildfire. I know Wildfire has a bit of a negative relationship in the community at the moment. I like it because this build's all about setting things on fire. So the more perks we have to set things on fire, the better. It's not overly effective, but if we're hosing things down anyways, it means we're slightly starting with a larger stack of Soul Blaze. Come down here. Branch off left quickly and get Perilous Assault. This is just because if we need to quickly switch out a high peril to our sword, we can do that quickly. Branch off to the right and get toughness damage reduction. Pick up the 10% melee attack speed and then Soul Drinker. This means that essentially when we kill an enemy with Soul Blaze, we restore 5% toughness and we get an additional critical hit chance. Really useful on our sword. Then get Kinetic Presence which again is just additional damage to elite enemies. Really useful when combining it with Brain Burst to get over some thresholds. Peril Generation, and get one with the Warp. Just some additional toughness damage reduction. Currently unlucky for some, it's alright, but any build which requires your teammates to go down isn't the best. On Veteran, you have a certain ability that allows you to revive faster and speed towards them. That worked slightly better than unlucky for some, which is just sadly everyone else on the team gets a buff when someone else goes down. Then get Venting Shriek, a Calming Eruption, which means essentially we lower our panel generation. And then Creeping Flames to apply more Soul Blaze. Get some less Peril Generation. Then pick up Solidarity. This just allows us to decrease our Quail Speed so we can get back in the fight for charging our staff quicker. Toughness Damage Reduction. Now I get Penetration of the Soul here. This is just because it gives essentially our Flame Attack a bit of rending, which is really useful when dealing with some armor targets. Toughness. And then get Warp Siphon. With Warp Siphon we're going to be wanting Inner Tranquility so we can sort of flamethrower for longer. Empyrean Empowerment, which means we get more damage. And in Fire Reborn, this is vital because essentially it means every time we kill an enemy with Soul Blaze, we regenerate a Warp Charge. Or a 10% chance to do anyways. And then get Warp Battery, which allows you to store up to 6 Warp Charges. But that's the update for the build. If you swing back to the other video now, you can watch the build kind of in the gameplay. The talents haven't changed that much, but this is a very classic first version of a Psyker build build in Darktide. If this is all you came for, I hope you enjoyed it. Tap back to the other video now to watch that gameplay. So moving on to my Duelist build. Really the loadout hasn't changed too much, but there's some new blessings I'd recommend trying to get. For the Dueling Sword, I prefer the Mark V, but use whatever mark you like. 
In terms of repost, you can switch that out. I'd keep Uncanny Strike just because it'll allow you to deal with armoured enemies very efficiently. But repost could probably be switched out for potentially um, two new blessings. Now these are Agile, which essentially gives us refresh dodge efficiency on weak spot hit, which we're going to be doing with the rending. Or Relentless Strikes. Now I don't have these leveled up at the moment because I only actually got my one dueling sword and never unlocked any of the blessings for it because I was happy with the role it had. But Relentless Strikes allow you to essentially stack up damage quite quickly with light attacks and then hit them quite hard with a heavy attack to get the rending. In reality, those sorts of things. There are other perks you could switch Repost out for. The critical chance is nice and successful dodge for the stacked finesse damage, so you can keep it if you like it. With a heavy las pistol, we're going to be using Dum Dum. Dum Dum is really useful in terms of leveling up the gun. Um, I haven't edited any of these items just yet because I've been focusing on my new build videos, but I'd get Dum Dum to level 4. And in terms of the second blessing that you want, really, you can choose whatever you want. It's interesting to see, actually, because while there is the one that increases your critical hit chance on headshots, I've noticed that the last pistol with crit damage, especially against maulers, does more body shot damage than it does headshot damage. I'll test it out in the psych area, and I'll quickly show you as well. It's a really strange thing. So in reality, you don't need that. So resuring accurate allows you to regenerate toughness. On critical hit kill as well, which is always useful. The additional range weak spot damage, I should probably change to critical hit damage. You want to be focusing this weapon on criticals. So increase range critical chance and increase range critical damage. As I said, I haven't edited this weapon yet. It's just an example of what you can use. And for the curios, 3 stamina, 21 health and 21 health. The hope is you're going to dodge a lot of that damage, but I'm well aware you're a very squishy build. So it's always nice to have that additional health. On to the talents. Now, the talents haven't changed too much, but what we're going to do is scooch down the right-hand side to get metal. We want to be regenerating that toughness on crit hits, because our last pistols are going to be doing a lot. Perfect timing, so we get some additional warp damage. In all honesty, that's more useful when we link it up to a sail more than anything else, but we need to take it to head down the tree. Toughness boost, then pick up a sail. Get both bonuses for a sail, and when timed in with perfect timing, it can do quite a bit. Toughness damage reduction. And you want Malefic Momentum. You want this because it gives you essentially damage to your warp attacks and damage to your non-warp attacks. So if you're quickly switching out between a sail and your pistol, it helps boost that up. Mind in Motion, I really like. You don't have to pick it up if you can manage the slow kind of running, but I much prefer it when using a sail so you can keep up the team while quelling. Also means when you're bubbling up with Scry's Gaze, you can keep on running. So then we've got Toughness Damage Reduction here. And then we've got Lightning Speed, 10% extra attack speed. Now, by crack of bone is really useful because essentially melee weak spot kills quell 5% peril. Now, this means when we wade in with our dueling sword, you'll be stabbing the head. Now, this one is long upwards, kind of downwards sweeps. You could switch this out to warp splitting, but in reality, it's not rending, it's only cleave. And we can cleave through lighter enemies quite easily with the basic attack. So I'd recommend by crack of bone to keep that peril down. Pick up precedence for increased critical hit chance. Come down here for the range damage. I'd pick up both dodges, just because we're going to be doing a lot of dodges with this build. And then get Scryer's Gaze. This time on Scryer's Gaze, I'd recommend picking up Endurance, so we get 20% damage reduction. Warp Speed, so we move faster. And then lastly, get Precognition. Now, the reason for this is we're not really going to be using Warp Attacks when we've got Scryer's Gaze on. So, in terms of Reality Anchor, it's, you know, it only slows the passive peril, whereas what we want out of this is the Finesse Damage which will also linger for 10 seconds afterwards. That increases all of our critical damage overall, so it's really useful, especially with a Laz Pistol. We don't need to bother with Warp Unbound, because once Scryer's Gaze pops, the only way to go down is to use a Sail, so just be careful on that. Heading down, get the additional critical hit chance. Got Tranquility through Slaughter, so non-warp range critical hits, quell 4% peril. Well, we're going to be using a Laz Pistol. Kinetic Deflection. So really useful on this build. Um, kinetic Deflection is a fantastic perk where you build peril, but it's also based upon the amount of stamina you have as well. So the more stamina you have, the less peril is generated. Really useful perk. Pick up the movement speed. Now, I don't like Security of Arms. You can get it if you want, but I find if using the Lads Pistol, you might be reloading quite a bit, and that can bump you up to the 100% peril on Scryer's Gaze when potentially you weren't going to hit it on a regular reload. So that's why I prefer to go to True Aim. Now, in reality, we're not going to be landing those 5% weak spot hits because we're probably going to be aiming for body shots, but it's nice when you get, say, a large target such as a Beast of Nurgle and it's away from you and you're just cracking it in the back. It just means you've got that extra chance for critical. 
come down, get the toughness boost, then get Disrupt Destiny. Now Disrupt Destiny essentially means that when we kill a marked enemy, they'll be kind of glowing with this blue outline, we regenerate 10% toughness, gives us 20% movement speed, and gives us a precision bonus. Then each precision bonus grants 1% damage, 2% critical hit damage, and 2.5% weak spot damage. Now this stacks, so when essentially we can build this up using a sail, which will just hunt out these people, kind of your marked targets, and switch the LAS pistol, and you start absolutely blatting it away, you can do a lot of damage. Then pick up Pearl and Providence. If you kill a marked enemy, you have a chance to quell your peril, which is really useful when linking it in with Scryer's Gaze. Lingering Influence, really useful. Um, there is a UI bug though aware with this, so please be aware. It doesn't look like your stacks are stacking, but in reality they should last for 10 seconds. Then you've got Cruel Fortune, which weak spot deals grant two additional stacks of Disrupt Destiny. Now this is really useful when you throw a targeted assail shot at one of these enemies, because it always gets a headshot. You can pick up Perfectionism if you're landing those shots, but if you're like me, and you don't want to focus on that, because especially the last pistol doing extra body shot damage, you'll scare clear of that. But anyways, that's an update to the Jeweler's build. So last but not least, we have my Psyker Stronghold build. Now, this is the build that I used to achieve the Atoma Elite Guard Penance, and actually I had worse blessings and worse curios at the time when I achieved it, so this is a slightly zoomed up version. Um, these weapons haven't been fully upgraded at this moment in time, as I, again, have been focusing on other build videos for mastery levels. And because I'd only just had two shock mauls, I never got any of the blessings, because I rolled this one quite early on, and I was happy with it. So we're running the Mark III shock maul and the Mark IV bolt pistol. For the blessings on this one, we're going to want high voltage. This means we do 25% extra damage versus electrocute the enemies. Now, if you're not aware, the shock mauls alternate fire. You stick them all into someone, and it shocks them. This also links into the fact we're going to be electrocuting enemies when we hit them with our heavy melee attack. For the second one, I like Falter, and this is because it increases stagger on weak spot hit, so when we go in to hit them with the kind of overhead swing of this shock maul, we can knock over enemies, and this includes maulers and things like that. So I'd recommend picking this up, and if you can get it level 4, it increases it by 100%. Really useful. Then we've got the bolt pistol. Now this bolt pistol is, I mean it rolled perfectly and this was prior to the last update. Annoyingly, again I haven't got it to rank 500 yet to get the additional reload speed and stability, but that's fine. For the blessings we're going to want puncture and lethal proximity. Why? Because these are some specific bolt weapon blessings. Puncture essentially changes the bolt pistol's kind of threshold for kills. It lowers it by one shot, which when you're only running 88 ammo is huge but it also means you can potentially fire two shots at Ragers and know they're going to die, so you can switch to your melee weapon and quickly hit them. Lethal proximity is just fun. Essentially, point-blank shots cause a massive explosion, but it also includes the explosion like stagger radius as well of the basic attack, which is really useful to use. So for the perks on here, I've got some additional range weak spot damage just because the headshots are really, really handy. I think body shots one-shot snipers anyways. And then I've just got 25% damage to Maniacs because there's always that moment of panicking when they're running towards you with this build. And it's nice to be able to switch out to the Bolt Pistol and hoosh off a heavy round which hits them dead in the head. For Curios, we're going to be running a 3 Stamina, 21% Max Health, and 21% Max Health. So, for the Talents. With the new skill tree, we're going to be heading down. We get Quietitude and Warp Expenditure and Battle Meditation. Now the reason for this is Quietitude and Warp Expenditure are really useful like when you're decreasing and increasing your peril with Smite. It just helps build toughness so you kind of have a constant toughness region. Battle Meditation, if we kill something it quells some peril means we might be able to Smite longer. Pick up 15% Toughness. I mean, you choose. Pick up the 15% Toughness, then head down to Smite. Now I've been through Smite and I do have a separate video explaining it even if the audio is pretty bad. But what we're going to want to do is pick up all of the abilities enfeeble and lightning storm increase the damage of our smite and allow allies to do more damage so really useful when dealing with just hordes and then charge strike this is a new ability which allows our heavy melee attacks to electrocute enemies our shock maul can electrocute enemies with its special but now it means that when we hit hordes this can likely kill certain enemies with one hit rather than two I like to get Mind in Motion on this build, so just tab down quickly to get this. It's just really useful when spiting to kind of keep up with your team with the dodges. Less Peril Generation. Psychonetic Aura. So the reason we're getting this is it ties in very nicely to our shield ability, and we can get it back more often. So every time we kill an elite enemy, in Coherency, we get 5% of our regen back. Get the Toughness Damage Reduction. Now again, switch and just get Perilous Assault here, and this is because we might be running at quite high peril when we need to switch our weapon. Say, for example, we've just popped a smite at 80%, getting the pushback, and suddenly realise there's a lot of enemies on us. 
By switching out, we can quickly wield our mace or our bolt pistol to confirm that kill. Then pick up Seer's Presence to get a cooldown reduction of all your abilities in Coherency. Really, really useful for our shield. Toughness damage reduction, and get one with a warp. Now I like this because we're going to be running quite high peril anyways. Can get this, but in reality we're not really going to be doing many criticals in our build. So if these were switched around and Anticipation was here rather than Empathetic Evasion, i probably, you know, take it. But the issue is because they're that way around, we're going to get one with a warp instead. Then we get Telekin Shield, really useful, I don't need to explain it, get the dome and then get Sanctuary. Now an interesting point about Sanctuary is that when you're inside it and you're with a Pox Bomber, you can stay in there. As long as you're not taking any other damage, you won't go down, you won't take health damage because the shield's toughness regeneration outweighs the Pox damage and before it corrupts your health, it has to do your toughness damage. So by the time you get that last tick down, it regens enough to do another tick. Really handy on high difficulties when you're cornered it might be better to stay in the shield and fight the enemies to regen your toughness out. Get the additional critical hit chance this way. And the reason we've gone this way and not the other way is so we can get down and get kinetic deflection and then the movement speed. Again, kinetic deflection is a fantastic perk. It makes any weapon on Psyker a viable blocking weapon to be able to kind of push back hordes. Get 10% health. Now I'd get Warp Rider. This just means we can do it some additional damage as peril increases. You can get Crystalline Will if you want, but Smite seems to have this special fail safe in that when we pop it to near maximum, it'll auto cancel. But I'd like to see them potentially do some work on Crystalline Will, where potentially there's a perk that you could, I don't know, up here rather than lucky for some, that your warp explosion causes a massive, like, Ogryn bomb style nuke. That'd be fantastic, but not in the game at the moment. Then get the additional toughness, and then get Empowered Psionics. Just means our Smite will do 200% damage and spreads faster between enemies. Get Psychic Leeching, which means they represent 15% toughness to our allies in Coherency, so when we're using it, we can regen that toughness to them. Overpowering Souls, which guarantees a chance to gain Empowered Psionics on Elite kills, which we're going to be doing, especially if we're sniping snipers with our Bolt Pistol. And they get Charged Up, which allows us to stack three stacks of Empowered Psionics, so when a Horde's coming and the team's low on toughness, you can pop them, and you'll regen 15% toughness to everyone in Coherency. But that's the build. But that's a quick update for the builds there. I'm, I don't want to give you some more gameplay as the kind of core loop hasn't changed overly too much with the Aura Damnation, but I want to get a quick video out because I've had a few commenters ask about what's the update with this build, and I'm more than happy to help out if I can. So that's the changes I would make to them. In terms of the blessings, we kind of talked through a few that you could change out. But again, all of these builds are just a place to start to have a fun time playing the game. If you think, I think this might be fun to use, switch it on, give it a go. And that's one of the things about Dark Tide. Try out different builds and try out different weapons because you might be pleasantly surprised. I run Showstopper on my Flamer on the Zealot and really enjoyed it. So I can't wait for it to be fixed on my Inferno Star Flamer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this quick update video. I've put timestamps in the description down below so you can quickly tab in between depending on what video you've potentially come from. But this is just a quick update to them. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like the content and want to catch more, subscribe to the channel. All the support you guys give me is a massive help in being able to kind of actually grow this channel and if you can probably see we're nearing the 1000 subscribers. When I get to 1000 subscribers I've got a few little celebratory things planned and I'll let you know via the community post that I'll be putting out around that time. But anyways guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it's taught you something new about Arctide. Anyways have a good day and happy hobbying.